Now at six, grieving these three teens taken too soon. I don't have my daughter anymore. I mean, we just buried her, and it just seems more comforting to go to where she was alive than where her body is, you know, five and a half feet down in the ground. Family and friends come together to remember these young girls killed by an accused drunk driver. A drastic step to fight climate change. Oregon's House approves a cap and trade bill to limit greenhouse gas emissions, but opponents say it could cost us jobs and raise prices at the pump. Plus, starting summer with a splash, Portland is opening public pools across the city starting today. And stop before you shop so a computer can scan your face. I'm not sure how I feel about my face being stored in some database. A local convenience store's controversial decision to use facial recognition technology. KGW News at Sunrise starts right now. And we start our Tuesday morning with a live look from our Rose City Sky Cam. Some clouds to start, but man, it's going to be another beautiful day later this afternoon. Something strange is happening, Rod, I've noticed. Yes. Well, First day of summer is Friday. Yeah. Every day between now and then, yes. longer Somewhere. than the previous day. <laughs> yes. But every day leading up to Friday, yes. cooler than the day before. <laughs> yes. What's going on? We can't explain it. <laughs> Let me tell you, this is one of the He's weirder honest. phenomena I've ever come across <laughs> in my career. Yesterday, 81. Today, 77. Tomorrow, 71. To Drew's point, we're going down. Nice day today, though. We have clouds over the city at this hour. So far, the marine layer uh, has not really become that widespread. A lot of you are waking up to some sun this morning. 58 degrees out the door, mid 60s at lunchtime, partly cloudy, and then we'll go on to be a beautiful sunny afternoon. All areas eventually 74 degrees. Here's the uh, Dallas camera from the Oregon Veterans Home. Gorgeous day. It'll be in the 80s out in the East Gorge. Ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> let's go to let's go ahead and show you the drive right now on the west side. Quick check of the sunset. That's out near the Sylvan Hill traffic rolling along just fine there behind door number three. The trip building a little bit out of Clark County. That's the I-5 commuted SR-14. And you can see that that's starting to plug up actually back past Mill Plain towards uh, SR-500. We'll check out those building drive times in just a few minutes. Guys. Okay, thank you, Chris. Right now, a few protesters are outside the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Office. This is in southwest Portland. They set up camp last night and they plan to be out there until this evening. They're marking the one year anniversary of this, the Occupy Ice Camp. Demonstrators stayed outside the ICE office for weeks, protesting the Trump administration's policy of separating migrant families. In honor of that anniversary, a local artist put up this art installation. Amy Sitars built a cage filled with bronze children's shoes. She says she hopes it'll keep people from forgetting what's happening at the border. We have an update right now, and it's good news regarding the search for this missing 13-year-old Portland boy. Last hour, we told you he was missing, but within the last hour, Portland police have told us that Noah, that's the boy's name, Noah is safe. He was reported missing from the King neighborhood in Northeast Portland last night, but again, Noah has been found. The man accused of murdering two people in the Lentz neighborhood in southeast Portland will be arraigned today. Police say 19-year-old Michael Ramirez shot and killed two people in May. The first shooting was on the 24th. The second was the day after. Police arrested him in Gresham. Investigators haven't said what led up to the shootings or what connection Ramirez has to the victims. And we didn't get a decision and my daughter didn't get a decision. She didn't get a choice. And none of the other girls did either. That is Jack Watt, the father of 19 year old Trinity, one of three teens hit and killed by a suspected drunk driver in Salem. Last night, the girls' loved ones gathered for a memorial to remember Trinity, 18 year old Michaela Tryon, and 19 year old Madison Capo Bianco. The wreck happened two weeks ago at Cherry Avenue Northeast and Salem Parkway. 25 year old Carlos Rodriguez, Rodriguez Palacios is accused of driving drunk and hitting the girl's car. He was back in court yesterday on three counts of manslaughter. Friends hope the growing memorial at the crash site will remind people how dangerous it is to drink and drive. The memorial is also a place for the girl's parents to remember their daughters. That was the last place my daughter was alive. You know, I don't have anything else. I don't have my daughter anymore. 
I mean, we just buried her, and it just seems more comforting to go to where she was alive than where her body is, you know, five and a half feet down in the ground. Just devastating. Loved ones say that the girls were out buying snacks for a girls' night when they died. The family also says the hardest part about all of this is thinking about a future without them. We have this story out of Newburgh this morning where a rare black swan was stolen from an animal sanctuary. So take a look at this right here. This is Belladonna. Someone took her early Sunday morning. So the owner of Enchanted Farm Sanctuary, her name is Robin Birdsong, she heard a commotion Sunday morning. She ran outside just in time to see a car peeling out of the driveway and speeding away. A bunch of Belladonna's feathers were scattered on the ground. Birdsong believes that whoever stole Belladonna wants to sell her for thousands of dollars. Anyone with information should call the Yamhill County Sheriff's Office. Well, the Oregon House passed a controversial bill aimed at reducing carbon emissions. It's sort of complicated, but essentially it limits greenhouse gas emissions and offers companies incentives to comply. It would do this by requiring the state's largest businesses by pollution allowances. House lawmakers debated the bill for six hours last night. Republicans say it would cause businesses to move out of state, but supporters say it'll help the economy as climate change worsens. The bill now goes to the Senate. Governor Kate Brown has said she would sign it. They are, I feel like, basically giving us another shot at this. Aggression Baker says she's feeling a little more hopeful after the Supreme Court said it will not hear the discrimination case against her business. The state fined Melissa Klein and her husband for refusing to make a wedding cake for a lesbian couple back in 2013. That court battle forced their shop Sweet Cakes by Melissa to close. Yesterday, the Supreme Court decided to send the case back to the Oregon Court of Appeals to be heard again. Now to some national headlines in your morning rush and the Pentagon is now sending 1,000 U.S. troops to the Middle East amid increasing tensions with Iran. Our troops will be used for surveillance as well as protecting U.S. forces. This comes after an attack on two oil tankers last week, which the U.S. blames Iran for. Iran, though, denying any involvement. Yesterday, they announced it would break with the 2015 nuclear agreement unless it's shielded from U.S. sanctions. In Dallas, federal officers killed a shooter during an exchange of gunfire yesterday morning. Officials say 22-year-old Brian Clyde started firing outside the lobby of that federal building. One employee had minor injuries. Officers were able to stop Clyde before he made it inside. A shooting also happened during that victory parade for the NBA champion Toronto Raptors yesterday. The gunfire briefly touched off a panic at the back of an estimated crowd of two million. Ceremony stopped for a moment before resuming. Two people were wounded, two others were arrested. Heiress and designer Gloria Vanderbilt died yesterday in New York of stomach cancer. She was the great-great-granddaughter of railroad and shipping magnate Cornelius Vanderbilt and the mother of CNN anchor Anderson Cooper. Vanderbilt gained fashion icon status in the 70s and 80s with her line of designer jeans. She was also a talented painter and actor on both stage and television. Vanderbilt was 95 years old. A massive volcano in Mexico is sending ash over two miles into the sky. This time-lapse video shows that volcano erupting. It's almost 18,000 feet high. It's the second highest mountain in Mexico. And that's your Morning Rush. Well, it is that time of year. Portland's outdoor pools are opening for the summer today. Christine Pitawanich is live right now in Northeast Portland. She's at Grant Pool. So Christine, the pool opened a few minutes ago, which means technically you could be in that pool a few <laughs> minutes from now. <laughs> It's a little cold for me, okay? I would do it. I, t I tell you what, I would do it because everyone was making me feel bad for not jumping in earlier. Maybe later, maybe later today. But yes, it is now open. There were people waiting at the door for Grant Pool to open. You can see the lifeguards are in their chairs. People are already in their pools. And yes, uh, indoor and outdoor pools all over Portland open today. Barb here joining me now. She was literally the first person in the pool. Barb, how are you feeling? It's opening day. Oh, I love it. It's always a thrill to be able to swim outside. I, I grew up swimming outside, so it's a treat. 
Did you make sure you were like first in line? Because I saw you beelining it through the doors. Well, I always try to get here when it opens just to get going, you know, so yeah. Wow. Okay. Are you like an everyday swimmer? And what do you love about the fact that, you know, we we have these open pools, indoor, outdoor, often free sessions too? Oh, um, yeah. I've been a swimmer all my life. I swim four or five times a week. And uh, being able to swim outside as opposed to inside is always wonderful watching the sunrise come up. Okay. So. Okay. Hey, Barb, I'll uh, let you get back to your laps then. Thank you so much. As you just heard, you can watch the sunrise, right? A lot of people already here. I count three, four, five, maybe six people already here. But you can bet a lot more probably going to be showing up a little later this morning. Um, things you can take advantage of are those free swim sessions that I talked about a little bit with Barb. All you have to do is go to Portland Parks and Rec's website. There you can find like times, locations, and dates for those swim sessions. But yeah, a lot of fun stuff to do at indoor or outdoor pools. Whatever, what, whatever you want to, whatever you feel like doing. Back to you. Again, Christine establishing what she does not feel like doing this morning is getting <laughs> into the pool. <laughs> Not yet. Not what yet. is the current temperature? She it's says cold. It's, cold. Yeah. it's cold. It's cold. That's not heated. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming yeah. the water temperature is in the 60s, but I mean, outside is 58 degrees Ooh. more. Yeah.